Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Eastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and um, yeah it's great to be back up in the loft again um, and as you've just witnessed you have seen the class 26 come into the station uh, it's the first time I've had something running on these tracks since um well the grimy rails video and uh, yet yeah, seems to be all working the points and everything seem to be working on this small section of track which is good news so where are we at well the previous video was about um, the designing of the station which uh, which yeah I'm quite happy with and uh, hopefully we'll get started on that soon but there's still one thing left to do and that's the Great Wars of Jarrah that I had started before I had uh, well contracted Covid so let's have a look at what we've got so far so I remember a while back we had a, a brick wall here uh, which I took out, replaced, and um, yes, I have finally capped it off. And it kind of matches the existing. Right, it's slightly darker, but uh, you would never know that that support and wall was there. And if we come down, so we're virtually level with the trucks, you can't see Jarrah Wall, which is good. Because I didn't particularly want to have that wall proud of the stone wall. The capping stones. I have done this, oh, I don't know how many times. And it just seems to come out quite well every time. The dirty, grimy look. Now what I've done this time round, slightly different from before, normally I build these uh, main capping stones up with um, lollipop sticks and then chamfer the corners, but with this one I've just used the lollipop stick and then just put a groove in it. That's all I've done. So they're the lollipop sticks and these are the coffee stirring sticks. And I just kind of... Um, helps finish off that wall and here's a couple of examples here I just flip that over you can see where I've scored it with a coping saw or if you've got a, a razor saw that would do the same um, it, might, it might even be better actually because you get a finer cut but that's all it is lollipop sticks and coffee stone sticks glued on using PVA wood glue and just let them settle overnight and then come back the following day and then paint them um, basically I've done a yellow um, paint to start with which I use an enamel paint because I think it's better to use an enamel paint for the the coat because it draws into the wood better I think and then after that I used um, acrylics black white and green um, various shades of black and white mixed together so you get different tones because if you look closely each one of them slabs is a slightly different colour to the previous slab so there you go so that's this end of the wall which I'm quite happy with and um, as a little reminder to myself that these are coffee stirring sticks. I've just left the end round. And let's finish that edge off. Probably won't see that actually because it's slightly lower than the stone wall, but um yeah, it's just a yeah, it's just my way of doing things. <laughs> um I've still gotta take this edge out because you can still see the white car, but what I might do there, I might just build it up with greenery and hide that edge. But uh, we shall see. Uh, 
And meanwhile, at the other end of the Jarrow Wall, I've done a fair bit of work here. Uh, I came up last night for an hour or so and uh, papy mashied from the old baseboard right up to the underside, right up against that wall. Uh, that's had two lots of paper mashing on it, so that's gone solid. So that's just a case of painting that and then um, blending it in with the original. And yet again, I have capped the stones off. And uh, I ain't got a clue how he got there. Because the bridge is not up. Hmm. Something fishy going on here. Anyway, so. Getting back to the subject, mana, mana, matter. Um, yeah, same goes for these capping stones, coffee stirring sticks, and lollipop sticks. And as for the refuse, which uh, I have to thank you guys for that because I did not have a clue what this was. Um, all I've done there is I've just cut out a little piece of paper. Um, if I show you an example, because I, I needed to do a couple. And that's what I've done there. And I pressed it pretty hard with a pen. And then uh, I glued it over that edge, the top edge. And then just um, lightly dabbed it with some grey paint and a little bit of um, green. I think I've gone over the top with the green, but it um, still looks like it's, um, well, been there forever. So, where do we move on from here? Good question. The walls are almost finished, but still one more wall left to do. And it's this wall that goes on this side. Um, I'd rather do it now while I'm doing the walls because uh, I've already made the opposite buttress for this side to go here and I've also done the capping stones so it should end up the same width and everything for this side so let's get cracking so what we're going to do here is obviously we want to bring the ground level up but I want to do it quickly rather than building it up with paper mashy like we've done on the far side. So we're going to use fiberboard here which we'll uh, talk about in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is go from the edge of the rail and a line for the card as well so that we we're talking about 30, 33 millimeters from the edge. So if we do that all the way along 33 33 then we'll be able to get a nice curved shape which will follow the track um, that's what I'm thinking anyway so something like that now <laughs> gotta join all these dots up and there uh, Mark it and cut it. Let's put a few extras in. So we have a basic shape. I'm just going to run this pencil on that edge. Hopefully we can cut that off as well. Right, so we shall cut that. This is the fibre board I'm using. They actually use it for insulating homes. Now you can pick it up at Wix. Um, I just happened to be given this piece by Chris over at Wheezy Palace. Uh, so, 
Thank you, Chris, for that. I told you it would come in handy. We've marked it now. So this line here will go along where we marked it, and this is the curved edge. So we'll cut that out, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some grip fill to stick it to the baseboard, and then I'll do is I'll, there's another layer to go on top of this to bring it up to the height that I want it. Now we have an instant hillside. And I think it's a lot more quicker than trying to paper mash it all. Um, I've added a piece of 6mm ply to bring it up to the same height as this bridge abutment here. So that's 58 and this is 56 now with that piece of plywood on. And by the time I add a 2mm road, uh, a card there for a 2mm road, that should bring it up to the 58. That would be ideal for the bridge across. The new hill side is firmly bedded in, so it's time to mark out a few critical positions. Mainly the bridge um, opening here and here. It roughly works out at 35 millimeters in width on the inside of this uh, buttress here. So we've transferred that across. So what we're going to do? We're going to start by building from the centre of this hillside outwards, uh, and that way everything should line up with the buttress on both sides. That is the cutting plan. As you've probably noticed, I have cut out for the two refuge um, portals, if you like, and um, here is the actual wall that's going to go in place. You see I've already pre stoned the back edge of the walls on both of them and uh, as you can see there I've just added the card as well so now that should fit in there snugly as it forms the shape of the wall as you can see it is quite narrow in there it's just enough width for one track as it's always been well it's always been the idea anyway so the next thing to do is to glue this in place with some PVA wood glue and let that go off overnight and then I can clad it with some card some three hours later or shall I say three evenings later at an hour apiece we have more or less finished the walls leading into Jarrah Road Station, uh, which is uh, quite an amazing feat really considering the amount of measuring and cutting I had to do. So looking at the space that we have here, um, there's enough room for at least two buildings. Um, probably farmhouse here and of course the Wylam terraced house or cottage here so uh, yeah you've got 160 by oh yeah 130 deep so yeah so a couple extra buildings to go in this little area here and uh, that is what this layout is lacking buildings and managed to find time to put the door in so you can more or less say I have started the station but I haven't really so what's left to do regarding the walls well there's a little bit of more um, stone paper to add on I think I've just about got enough to do the whole the whole thing which is, which is good now then a nice little surprise is this area here. See this bit of uh, foam? 
when I cut the slope out I flip this upside down so that now becomes level and if you look at the shape of that you know what I'm going to put there don't you it is perfect for that now then by the time I get trees and foliage around there you probably won't see um, that as much as you would like to see it but, uh, but yeah that fits in there perfectly so this video has been more of an update really um, on, on the, getting the walls done um, a little bit closer to starting the station so let's just take you in from this side and this is going to change the appearance of this baseball quite significantly, I think. So as you come around, there will be the bridge going across there. And hopefully we can start that quite soon. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, it's been more of an update uh, like I've already said rather than um, cutting, watching me cut the card, I'd rather just uh, get on with it because you know uh, it's just basic modelling really, it's nothing um, fancy here uh, as far as I can see, I mean if it was a building or something I would have took you through it step by step. And talking about taking you step by step, when I come to build the station uh, a few of you have asked to go through the drawings again right at the very start which I will do so until next time enjoy model railways bye for now bye